Uh, this is uh, James Alexander from Visibility. And uh, I just want to uh, take a moment to uh, welcome you all to um, uh, our first webinar of the year that we're really excited to be doing uh, once again in uh, conjunction with uh, Larry Bodine from uh, LexisNexis. And um, uh, we're excited in particular because uh, mobile has really taken off and uh, in terms of uh, device usage and, uh, and, and, and really the power of being able to use it from a marketing channel. And, uh, and so there's, um, uh, there's, there's some excitement in the, in the market for how to leverage this new tool. Uh, there's also some concern and some fear about um, uh, using it correctly and, and maybe duplicating effort with, uh, with mobile websites. And so what we did was we pulled a bunch of information together to really help parse apart what it means to be mobile and, um, uh, and, and where we think some of these new technologies are really going to go. So uh, if you just advance to the next slide, um, I'd like to just introduce a couple of folks. Um, and uh, Larry, if, uh, if you would, uh, why don't you just, I know a lot of folks probably know you on the phone already. Uh, if it's anything like last, um, uh, last year's webinar we did with you, you had quite a fan following. But why don't you go ahead and just give uh, folks a quick overview of uh, yourself and your background and what you're doing over there at Lawyers.com. Sure. James, thanks very much for having me. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on the program today. Uh, by way of background, I'm the editor-in-chief of Lawyers.com which is a website that gets uh, between three and four million uh, unique visitors every month. We uh, also have a very active uh, program focusing on our mobile site. You can uh, use your iPad or use your iPhone or your cell phone to go to lawyers.com and you'll find a section on understanding your legal issue where we've got a bunch of reference articles about uh, the law. Uh, you can also read the current latest news. We publish at least half a dozen uh, consumer law news stories every day. And then, um, of course, we have the largest database of uh, attorneys. And you can, if you find that you need an attorney, you just tap a button and you can look them up, and all of them are rated by clients and other attorneys. Uh, and with that, it's a delight to be here. That's great, Larry. Um, so I'm James Alexander, and uh, I, I'm uh, the head of visibility. Um, and, and while my my title says chief executive officer, I'm really more or less the chief frustrated consumer at the company. And uh, and and the inspiration for for visibility really hit uh, several years ago, and I discovered that as a professional, I couldn't easily be found online. And the reality is that Google is who we said we are who Google says we are, and uh, and we need to be able to uh, help people find our backgrounds and the things about us that they want to know so that they're comfortable deciding to uh, engage with us, hire our services, and, and whatnot. And so I started uh, Visibility three years ago now to um, to really help professionals package and share their online identities. And today uh, we're very proud that in a very short period of time, uh, we, we now have over 5% of uh, the, the largest law firms in the world using Visibility. Uh, and, uh, and many small and mid-sized firms as well, uh, and of course accounting firms uh, are starting to come on the board on board now that they see the value of this um, uh, that, that law firms have embraced, and we have some of the, the largest uh, accounting firms uh, using the service as well. So uh, really excited. Uh, we're not here to talk about visibility, so that's all you're going to really hear about it. You'll see some examples, but uh, but that's really the end of that. I do also just want to uh, uh, acknowledge Adrian Maynard, who's our director of marketing, uh, who's on the phone and uh, is going to be um, uh, the wizard behind the curtain. Uh, he's also going to uh, uh, show us a couple of uh, aspects as we get to the five items that we can uh, we can walk away from this webinar with. Uh, he'll be uh, uh, actually showing us a couple of those, uh, given that uh, he's an expert in uh, in, um, uh, in in two specifically that we're going to talk about. So uh, with that, uh, Adrian, if you'd uh, just advance to the uh, the next slide, and uh, we'll just dive right in. I, I do uh, just as a highlight uh, want to point out that our goal for today is to really arm you with um, some background data that you can use to help justify or validate your mobile activities uh, or just inform a mobile strategy. We're going to start with a, a, couple, of, uh, a couple of slides on data. And then, uh, and then lastly, we're going to wrap up with uh, five immediate things that you can do. Well, four immediate things and, and one item that uh, you probably want to start the process on. But things that you can leave today, uh, this webinar with, and go do this afternoon or tomorrow um, and, uh, and, and, and be implementing um, uh, at a very high level some, uh, some, some mobile activities. So, uh, so with that, uh, we're, we're on a slide that says people are uh, researching and buying with mobile devices. This is the first section of, uh, of, a, of a new infographic we just released, and uh, we came with your, uh, with your invite. And we just want to talk uh, real quickly about uh, some of these statistics because they're, um, they're, they're, they're really important for laying the groundwork for what we're talking about. And probably the most important 
uh, is is the fact, um, uh, Larry, that 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 mobile devices are outselling PCs by two to one now, and uh, uh, as of uh, uh, 2012, um, uh, this, this data is, uh, is is current, and I think I think it really shows that uh, uh, we have a situation now where uh, average users, average buyers of products and services. Are, are now equipped with devices that can be used to uh, pull information uh, into, uh, into those devices. You know, uh, this makes perfect sense to me in, in that it's much less expensive to buy a smartphone that you can get on the Internet with or um, even an iPad, which is not particularly cheap, but it's cheaper than um, a laptop. And so I'm really not surprised to see these statistics at all. And it really illustrates how... Um, you know, people are, are, are trying to be more productive with a handheld device. You know, the, um, the, uh, the thing with uh, when, when you have a, a mobile device and you can get on the Internet, you're, you're never untethered. You're, you're, you're always connected. You can, um, uh, you can make a call. You can check your email. But um, as, as we're finding out, more and more people are using uh, their handheld devices to access the Internet. And, and, and part of that access, I think, also gets to um, uh, the fact that they're using these devices to influence purchase consideration. So 79% um, of, of smartphone users uh, are, are actually using their devices to, to, to make decisions about buying stuff. And that's both um, – and I think it's important to point out that's both products um, and services, uh, not, not, just, uh, not just products. And 74% and of those are actually making a, a, a purchase decision as part of what they find um, by using their device. And, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, just to illustrate with a quick little story, uh, this is something that people do all the time. I, I recall I was uh, trying to hook up a second monitor to my computer, and I needed a particular kind of cable. I uh, went to one store, uh, wasn't able to find it. The guy mentioned just sort of a real shorthand for another store, and I was able to go online immediately, find the other store, call them up, get their location, see how late they were open, and verify that they had the kind of cable that I was looking for. And I think that illustrates exactly how people, uh, not only buying uh, products, but also buying legal services and, and professional services. Um, you know, I, I, think, I, I think that that's, um, uh, you know, that, that ties into, uh, you know, very nicely into the, the fact that people are searching, uh, you know, using phones, right, for, for, for um, you know, for searching, uh, and, and many of these searches are local uh, because they, uh, you know, they want to have the, uh, you know, looking for something that, that, that's right around the corner, or they're standing in front of the store, or standing in front of a product, um, you know, or, you know, or in, in the case of a legal service, you know, maybe they've been pulled over and they have a question uh, that they need to have answered immediately. And so, um, and so, you know, if you have a smartphone in your pocket, it sort of goes without saying, but it's good to see the data back it up. People are using it, uh, which is which is great. And I think that sort of leads to the last stat here, which is that um, there are mobile technologies that, you know, not just entering website addresses, but, you know, when you're on a smartphone, the smartphones have cameras in them. They have scanners. And, um, and, and the reality is that, uh, that, that there are technologies like near-field communication. We'll talk about some of these, um, which is sort of phone-to-phone uh, -phone using, like, things like Android Beam, um, which, are, which are pretty early. But then there are things like QR codes as well that are appearing on ketchup bottles and uh, back of cereal boxes. Uh, in, in New York City, uh, every building permit now has to have a QR code on it. And so these digital bridges are actually pretty powerful ways to um, automatically take someone to an experience online. And I think marketers were really struggling to use these things properly early on, but uh, QR code adoption in the United States and usage is, is just skyrocketing. And, uh, and so, um, you know, one in five smartphone users uh, now as of um, uh, mid last year are, have, have said uh, have, that they've used uh, QR codes to, uh, to get to material online as well. So it's not just having a mobile experience to, to be thinking about, but, but clearly uh, you know, creating these digital bridges to get people to these mobile experiences uh, is also something that, um, uh, that's, um, uh, that, that's being used and, and should be thought about as, as part of the, the mobile strategy. So let's, uh, let's go to the next, uh, the next section. So, so, so I think we've established that people are researching and buying uh, with mobile devices. I think um, you know, you know, now let's look at what happens you know, if, if, if you're not ready to talk to them, if you don't speak mobile. And, uh, and Larry, I, I think, uh, you know, stat number five here 
uh, you know, is uh, right in your wheelhouse. Well, that's right. Um, research that LexisNexis conducted determined that 75% of all people, when they're searching for a lawyer, go online. That's a huge sea change. Three out of four people now, when they're looking for a lawyer, go online. And what we're discovering is that more and more of them are doing so with their uh, cell phones. Now, these uh, statistics uh, here are, are at least a year old, and, and, and certainly they've increased. But uh, according to the research that uh, LexisNexis did, you know, among those who used online research uh, sources to find a, a lawyer in the past year, 21% used a smartphone and 12% used a tablet. And it's interesting, I just checked our analytics for lawyers.com just to sort of get an idea of how people were accessing our, our site. And I discovered that um, the most popular device is an iPad followed close behind, behind by an iPhone. So that's why people come to Lawyers.com is to look up a lawyer. So we're finding that more and more people are indeed uh, using smartphones to find uh, to find a journey. So, so you know, I think it's interesting, the, the iPad piece. I, I think the, um, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, we're going to talk about having, you know, being ready and speak, to speak mobile. But it's you know it's not it's not just enough to have a site that can be viewed you know on a mobile device you know I mean you know I, I don't think I don't think people on a smartphone maybe an iPad they're, they're they you know which is a, a device that you think of as being to consume content but certainly on a on a small smartphone or a small screen you know you don't necessarily want to look at 18, 18 paragraphs of bio copy about an attorney um, you know you, you may just need a very specific answer that will lead to your decision to hire that attorney. And so, and so, you know, you know, having your site be readable on a small screen is 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 definitely a a, a step in the right direction. But in some respects, it's almost it's almost more mobile frenemy than mobile friendly. In other words, yes, it can be read on a small screen, but it doesn't optimize from a functionality perspective, uh, you know, or or an expectation perspective what that user uh, is expecting when they go there. And there's a real penalty that you pay for that in that 50% of, of people will not recommend uh, a business with a poorly designed website. And in fact, um, if you're looking at stat number seven, um, uh, if you don't have one at all or it's unfriendly, 61% of your customers are going to leave to go find uh, a website or, or a vendor who can speak to them in a, in a mobile environment uh, in a way that they, that they need to, um, uh, that, you know, giving them the information that they actually need. In a format that they that they're looking to get it in, and and that makes sense, and it's good to see the data back it out. But um, you know, if, if I'm on a smartphone and I and I and I need some immediate information, you know, I don't want to wade through a full website. You know, I just I just want to get the phone number. I want to get a you know, one-click dial. I want to maybe set up an appointment. I want to maybe do some, some uh, immediate information about somebody or a specific topic. And uh, and if I can't get that, then I'm gonna you know I, I've got a long list of Google search results. On the other uh, on the other screen, and I'm just going to you know go and find the next one and, and just keep going down the line. So I think there is an economic impact here um, to not being uh, prepared to speak mobile uh, or deliver an experience that's expected. Uh, uh, and and worse, uh, you know, taking the tick box that your site is mobile optimized, but it doesn't necessarily meet the expectation functionality for the specific device that is accessing um, the site. And I think that leads us to stat number eight about Selling more. The um, uh, you know this this stat is um, uh, is, uh, is is interesting. Uh, it comes from Google, and basically, um, you know, they're they're they, in their research, they're showing that you know, sixty seven percent of people are more likely to buy from a business with a mobile friendly site. And to some extent, that makes sense. It's kind of like the old Yellow Pages ads, and I may be dating myself here a little bit, but you know, you, you tend to call the bigger ads in the Yellow Pages. Uh, because you, you just have sort of a credibility feel, um, and I think uh, I think mobile experiences will be uh, you know will be uh, you know very similar in that regard, and and in spite of all of this all of this data you know that that mobile is taking off, people are accessing sites in a mobile way, uh, people are looking for professional services on mobile devices. Um, stat number nine, Larry, is uh, is 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 really sort of an interesting punchline. Yeah. Um... Most buyers, 72%, expect you to have a mobile-friendly site, and there's a real opportunity here for law firms to step up. Um, a recent survey of the top 100 uh, U.S. law firms in terms of uh, gross revenue found that only 29 of them 
or 29% of the 100, had a mobile-friendly site. And we're going to show you a couple of them later. Some of them, you know, uh, have, have basically just taken what's on their full HTML site and kind of crammed it into a little two by three screen. So, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's so much opportunity here to meet the market demand. You know, when you realize that when people access your, your legal, your law firm website on a mobile device, they're looking for information immediately. Uh, the information has to be condensed. It's got to be, you know, consumable quickly. And uh, when people are searching for something on mobile, they're looking for an immediate answer. And when you build your site, it, uh, it, it's got to be built to respond uh, accordingly. So um, just to hammer home, uh, you know, the, the other point too, it's, 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 not just, it's not just law firms. It's, you know, accounting firms and other professional services firms as well. And, uh, and, and, and in some respects, legal is ahead of accounting. Uh, we looked at the same, uh, the same list of the top 100 accounting firms and, and just 15 percent. You know, 15 had had um, you know were, were prepared to uh, to engage with their customers uh, in in some kind of mobile uh, mobile way. So um, let's go to the um, so let's go to the last uh, bit of data. So so the, the story we've been telling here is that you know mobile usage is uh, is exploding. People are using devices to make purchase decisions, um, uh, but uh, unfortunately the the the, the market uh, is not there yet in terms of the um, uh, in terms uh, being able to um, uh, uh, speak mobile, uh, although there's a growing awareness uh, and economic and, and the awareness that there's an economic impact of not being able to do that, which is improving, which is great. Um, and and so now and so now we want to uh, sort of bring up the, the third and final piece, which is that you know if you are going to engage, that you know it's not just a matter of of, of having the content be readable on a small screen, but it's, it's, it's having the ability uh, to, uh, to understand that when someone comes in on an iPad or a PC, their expectations for content and, and the experience are fundamentally different than if they come in on, let's say, a smartphone or a small phone. And so that's that very, can, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's very true, James. Uh, you know, uh, the top two mobile and marketing, uh, the top two mobile marketing objectives for businesses are increasing customer engagement and generating revenue. And this is what smartphones are all about. According to a uh, Harris poll, the, re the, the far and away uh, top reasons that people use smartphones are number one, to stay engaged, number two, to get research and news, and number three, to get directions or find a land address or find some place that they're trying to get to. This is very, very different from uh, PCs and computers where the primarily, primary uses are to read email, to conduct research, and thirdly, to do some social networking. So, um, it, you know, when, when you're focusing on a mobile site, you know, it's completely different. You know, you, you, you're not putting up uh, you know, an online reference piece or something that goes into a tremendous amount of detail. The whole idea is to figure out some way to uh, stay engaged, figure out uh, what is the kind of immediate need that someone would look your firm up with on a smartphone and, and have the response to that uh, ready. And interestingly, also, 70% of smartphone owners call a business after searching. And that sort of illustrates the situation that I was in when I was looking for the computer cables. But, you know, this is this is the kind of thing that uh, comes up in other contexts, too. I, uh, whenever I go to a shopping mall, I always look for the, the kiosk that shows sort of directions. You know, where is the store among the 500 stores in this mall that I'm trying to get to? And you can look at the kiosk, and it's basically, you know, an, a, a listing of uh, every single store that's there. It's very hard to use. Frequently, I'll find a QR code or some kind of an app that I can download to my smartphone. Um, and once I scan that, now I have it on my smartphone and I can search it. And uh, it just, you know, illustrates another way that uh, smartphones are, are, are used, you know, to, to find the store that you're trying to get to and to ultimately lead you to uh, make a purchase. I'm glad you brought up QR codes uh, again because that's a, a nice segue. We're going to close out uh, sort of the stats section here with, um, you know, with with a couple of our of our own stats. 
so um, so so now that now that um, uh, you know one of the one of the uh, great uses for professional services people is having the ability to have their mobile identity in a package. Um, uh, there are a lot of vendors that can provide a service like this. We provide one. We call it a mobile business card. And um, and we, we we had such a great year last year. Um, uh, you know, it's signing up so many uh, small, medium, and large firms that we we now have uh, some really great statistics in terms of what to expect if uh, you arm every one of your professionals or your key professionals with, let's say, a QR code on a business card or a QR code on a, on a downloadable bio. And uh, and what we're finding now is that um, every 30 days, uh, about 20% of, of professionals in an organization that have the rolled this out firm wide. Uh, are seeing about three and a half scans uh, per per month of uh, of their mobile business card, and 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 what's even more interesting is that is that they're spending about two minutes uh, on that mobile business card, and that compares to about a minute on average on a web page, but but even more interestingly, uh, you know, probably about probably about less than half a second when you actually hand somebody a print card. So I mean, think about you know how much time you spend looking at a business card when someone hands it to you. You know, you know, Larry. We were talking about this yesterday. It's, it's, it's like you know, unless that card is, you know, it's heavy stock or an interesting texture, uh, or you know, or or has some very interesting design. You know, we, we tend to kind of take the card and and, and put it in our wallet uh, to follow up later. So to have someone spend two minutes on a mobile business card um, is, I think, just a testament to the fact that uh, you know that, that that mobile really is a a, a very uh, uh, effective way to to help that engagement process and move that purchase consideration uh, to have your, your your firm brought in or hired uh, to move that to move that along. So Adrian, let's go to the next slide, and um, and and that will sort of lay the groundwork of of some stats. You know, let's let's talk about what you know you know. There's mobile friendly. There's mobile frenemy. Um, let let's talk about what what mobile friendly is not. Just to just to just to give uh, a sense and. Um, and I think I think the first example that I just want to show is uh, that I want to talk about here is uh, is the first one on the upper left, which is uh, my uh, my LinkedIn page on a smartphone. So so if you take the URL that LinkedIn gives you and you go to it on a smartphone, uh, they are delivering this experience you see here uh, for yourself, for your professionals, and it really is. Mind-boggling that a company with 200 million users and the resources that they have are still delivering an experience like this. They're not taking you to the mobile app, uh, although that's got its own set of issues. But you know, they're delivering they're delivering this kind of experience. They should know better. But I think I think what this what this really you know serves for me as an example uh, of is how hard it is for companies that take a PC-centric view of the world. And that's where they got their start, you know, building great, beautiful websites, and how they're struggling to, in essence, um, you know, make them forward compatible, not backward compatible, but forward compatible with the newest technologies. Um, and and you almost need to start. And I think one of the themes of this webinar is is to put your hat on and think mobile first. If I was going to design an experience first for a mobile screen, for a small screen, what would that experience look like? As opposed to trying to shoehorn in uh, the content that we have, there, there, there's a, uh, there's a, a technology buzzword, things like responsive design, and you know, and, and these things are good. They're, you know, responsive design, for instance, is more of a content play. It's also a content problem of porting content over to a small screen to make it readable, but it, but it fails to address the functionality expectations uh, of, of, of that specific device, and it assumes that everyone uses the same device for the same reason. And as we've just shown. Uh, statistically, that's 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 you know that that that's a myth. So um, so this is not mobile friendly. Um, and I think the other two examples, Larry, these are really uh, more examples of 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 mobile frenemy. They they they're readable, but but we could do better. Yeah. For instance, uh, I have a lot of friends at uh, Kirkland and Ellis, so I don't mean to uh, put a knock on the law firm, but uh, there's so much opportunity here that's missed in the uh, Kirkland and Ellis mobile site. For instance, if you go to the page, you'll see that it's uh, got a little bit of text about the number of lawyers that are at the firm and the cities that they're in, and uh, the fact that it's been uh, in, uh, in operation for a hundred years. None of this addresses um, 
urgent information. If, if somebody needs to find out something immediately from the Kirkland site, chances are you know it's not going to be how old the firm is or how many lawyers there are. So this is an opportunity to uh, replace sort of this introductory boilerplate with something that uh, deals with uh, current events or um, you know maybe even a client hotline. Uh, another thing is you know you'll see that there are three tiny links for lawyers, office information, and disclaimer. And on my little um, iPhone 4, the uh, uh, the text is so small that uh, I, I can't possibly touch one without touching the other three. And I could do the sort of you know pinch out uh, to make it a little bit bigger, but then all of the text runs off the corner of the page. So this is a, a real opportunity for a law firm to uh, start by uh, you know when you're composing the website, you know examine it on a handheld and uh, and design accordingly. I think the um, I think the Sutherland example kind of built on that a little bit as well. Um, you know, it's 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 readable. Uh, I think this is probably uh, an example of of responsive design uh, at work. So um, you know, so so the content from the the PC experience has been formatted to appear properly um, on a on a page uh, on a small screen. And um, but I, I think I think the question here that that I ask as I as I look at you know at, at what is you know a, a beautiful layout is you know what what does somebody who is who is looking at at, at this information on a small screen want to do um, that that brings them to this bio page on a small screen you know is it to read is it to read all of this copy or do they have a more immediate and pressing need I think the other challenge uh, with with um, uh, you know with with an approach uh, where uh, you're just porting copy from a uh, from a um, uh, from a, a, a PC site or PC optimized site uh, to a small screen is around basic functionality like you know like uh, like vCard and you know to uh, to assume that every device can handle downloading a vCard is actually is actually the wrong assumption. So for instance, iPhone uh, Safari on iPhone does not support vCard download. So you know if you if you have a vCard link. Uh, on a on a, uh, on a on a on a on your web page that can be viewed on a mobile device and, and may be optimized to 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 at least be readable on on a on a on a mobile device like an iPhone. Uh, you know, no one will be able to download that vCard uh, to an iPhone, which means that you're you're delivering a bad experience. And remember, people are using a small screen like a you know like a like a smartphone for engagement. They want to call. They want to download the contact details. And if you know if half or more of your traffic is coming in on iPhone, then 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 your site is broken. And so you know again it gets back to thinking about you know what what does somebody need and want on on my mobile site for 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 you know for um, uh, you know by device and how are we going to deliver that uh, you know in a way that is small, compact, and delivers fast and and looks good um, while still providing access to deep information like you see here. Adrian, let's 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 go to the other slide, which is um, you know examples of what um, you know some examples of, of what mobile friendly um, you know is about. And uh, I'll I I'll Larry, I'll let you take this one because this is your uh, in the upper uh, upper left corner. Sure, uh, this is um, how we've approached the uh, mobile with uh, lawyers.com. Uh, essentially, all of the links that you need to see are going to appear on one screen. You know, we've put in a graphic to make it a little bit interesting. Uh, we do have a little bit of information about ourselves, but it's probably no more than 10 words. And we figured out what it is when people come to the site that they want to find right away when they're using their cell phones and maybe they're not in their office or they're not in their home. And, and the top one is find a lawyer. Um, and if you tap on that, it, it opens up a screen that auto-detects your location. And it's just a simple matter of typing in what your legal issue is. Understand your legal issue is the second link, which is a collection of um, well on on the full website we we have probably two or three thousand articles, but uh, we know that when you're using a cell phone, you're probably not going to be doing any sort of extensive research. So we've boiled down the choices to about ten, and they focus on sort of the hot button issues that a consumer might face, such as uh, an auto accident, a criminal law, a question about child custody or identity theft, you know, something where they've, they've discovered something and they've got to get an answer right away. We also let people uh, ask a question. We have an ask a lawyer feature 
And uh, again, it's a simple matter. You just tap the uh, link and you plug in your question, and we have about 500 attorneys who can answer your question uh, for free. Uh, and then finally, uh, read legal news. We, uh, as I mentioned, uh, that's what I do as, uh, as, as the editor-in-chief. We, we publish half a dozen or more news articles focusing on legal news for consumers. And you can, again, get them all in little bite-sized little headlines when you look at them. And then when you click on it, you'll get kind of a, uh, a scaled-down version you know, without uh, uh, all, all of the other links in the left rail and the right rail. It's just basically the story. And so you know, the approach is just to give people exactly what they're looking for. And a law firm that I think does a really good job of this is uh, uh, Schulte, Roth, and Zabel, SRZ. And as you can see uh, in their mobile homepage, uh, they they go, uh, you know, they have a graphic, uh, they make it uh, 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 clear what what site it is, and then they just go right into news. Here it is. Here are current events that you, as a client of the law firm or a prospective client, might be interested in. And uh, importantly here, James, notice that they've got a share button there so that if a person is reading an article, they uh, have made it real easy to uh, share that on LinkedIn and Twitter and other social media because social media happens on handheld devices and, and this website uh, clearly capitalizes on that fact. Why don't you tell us That's about right. the Lobe and Loeb profile? So, so the Lobe and Loeb example is, um, uh, is a, another way to imagine a layer, uh, an engagement layer, if you will, that sits on top of a, uh, you know, a typical firm bio, and and the idea, the idea of of this is that it really, it really addresses what somebody is coming uh, on a smartphone to use, uh, and what they need and what they want, which is uh, the ability to engage immediately. Uh, you notice the phone as well as the uh, email option. There, some some have an SMS option to send a text message. Um, the ability to get a V-card. Uh, those things make a tremendous sense uh, to be able to download that V-card. But if you're on a device where it doesn't, um, uh, where, where the device doesn't support uh, downloading of a V-card, like an iPhone, there are other options like emailing. So, you know, basically thinking through that functionality and ensuring that you know you can easily get to the thing that you want. Um, but you know, so much about hiring a professional is about trust and um, and credibility. And so, thinking about ways to Leverage that LinkedIn uh, network that you may have. You know, if, if if I meet somebody and I know that I have three people in common with that person, I'm going to have a completely different experience uh, and conversation with that with that professional. Um, and so the question is, how how can you unlock these these social networks that are largely passive? I mean, LinkedIn is a great great tool, but it's largely a passive tool. We we go up there. Uh, you know, on the weekends, I'll, I'll probably get a bunch of folks who are on the webinar today who send me LinkedIn invitations uh, tonight or tomorrow, um, and it will be until then that they discover that we all discover who we have in common with each other, and so uh, and so that's a real missed opportunity. So things like being able to unlock LinkedIn connections uh, right, you know, right at the point of engagement can really help facilitate trust and credibility, and so that's important, and so you see that here as well. And then, of course, there's you know a, a links area, and you, you're going to link to a bio. That's that's an obvious, and you're going to go if someone wants all of that detail about somebody, no problem, it's there. It, it sits underneath this uh, this compact package. But there are other things that you can deliver uh, and provide that menu of options, so so a user can engage with your background and learn about you at their speed based on what they want to do. Um, and then, and then even things like you know directories, uh, you know, to to enable quickly going from one uh, person to another person, and and discovery within a firm and expertise can be very, very, a very, very powerful thing. So, I think the the example on Loeb and Loeb uh, of a mobile business card is, um, uh, is is a is is a way to show you know another way to reimagine that first layer of engagement on a small screen that works very, very nicely. Uh, you know, with a site that maybe is used responsive design that is that is providing more depth, uh, pulling from the PC-based experience, but it's a layer, it's a skin that sits on top of that and and really provides uh, a, a, a much more rapid-fire um, engagement approach, acknowledging the fact that people on that small screen are really looking to engage. By the way, I, I did just notice a, a comment come through that um, uh, people aren't sure that if you go to LinkedIn that you get the LinkedIn app versus the experience we showed earlier. I just want to clarify, 
that uh, if you go to LinkedIn on a phone, yes, it will light up your uh, it will light up the app and ask you to download the app. And by the way, make sure you you, you don't have privacy settings turned on because LinkedIn has chosen um, to, uh, to to not respect that. So you have to have privacy settings turned off to use LinkedIn. Um, uh, the example we showed, and I think the really important piece here is that if you do provide a direct link uh, to your LinkedIn profile, uh, which is what I showed for myself, or in the case of Loeb and Loeb, you see uh, a link here to my LinkedIn profile. If you use the URL LinkedIn gives you and you go directly to that URL on a smartphone, you will see the experience I showed earlier, which is a non-mobile optimized experience. So I hope that clarifies that question. Adrian, let's uh, let's uh, bring up with the uh, the third and final section of uh, our webinar here to um, uh, to really get into those uh, those five things that you can do uh, right now. Um, technically, four you can do right now. The the, the fifth is 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 really a, a, a strategic process to think through. Uh, but we have a great example to to really illustrate that point. So. Um, so I think uh, just just uh, diving in uh, right off the bat, Adrian, I'm going to actually uh, throw this to you because I know um, uh, the, the, the the high level point here that I, I think is really important as as professionals. You know, before we can take action, you know, we really want to assess the situation. We want to see what's going on. Um, you know, what is the need for in, in this case, you know, mobile? Are people coming to us from mobile devices? Um, and so the first thing to do is to go look at your logs. And Adrian, do you just want to take us through real quick how easy it is if you're using uh, Google Analytics to do that? Sure. Thanks, James. Um, and you know, before I talk about, you know, while we're talking about Google Analytics right now on, on this presentation, um, most popular web log pr packages will provide this detail. So you know, just dive in and, and find um, these reports inside your package. So in Google Analytics, it's super easy. Um, in the left column, Go to your audience section, go to technology and choose browser and OS. And from there, you see step two, choose operating system as your primary dimension. Um, that choice is a little bit on the right hand side of your screen. The second you do that, the report below the pie graph will just break out all of the, the OSs or the operating systems that are used um, or that are visited on your site. Choose iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, add up the numbers, and there you can quickly see that on this report here, um, this website is seeing about 15% of its traffic coming from mobile OSs. So you're able to get this number literally in about 30 or 45 seconds once you sign in to your Google Analytics account. Um, so James, that's how easy it is. Can you look at this number over time and build a report? You can. That's, that's a really good point. Um, Google Analytics is very powerful, so there's a lot more you can do. Um, you can build an automated report that may email you the PDF report every week or every day. Um, you can drill down and build automated reports to combine all of these OSs. So, so on this chart here in the lower right, see items 3, 4, 7, and 8. Um, you can combine those, so group them together and, and see just the, the, a pie chart with two sections, one for mobile and one for non-mobile. Um, but what, this stat, what these instructions here show you how to quickly and easily, just in a few clicks, get your number. Um, so you can justify do you need to pursue this or not or just sort of evaluate where you're at and set your benchmark because you know I don't know if we need to, ju to justify whether or not we need to do it but we certainly need to set our benchmarks around where our starting point is so we know if our efforts are worthwhile. So for, for those of you who have uh, you know the, 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 the partner who's knocking on your door every week um, asking about uh, analytics and, and mobile and things like that. This is a this is a tool that you know is probably already available to you. Um, if you're using it, terrific. If you haven't thought about it in this way, then then hopefully this is valuable. Uh, that you do have you do have data today that can tell you and inform a, a mobile strategy and give you air cover to help justify uh, you know beginning to expend uh, marketing dollars to start to build a mobile presence and start to think about. Uh, you know what kind of experience you want to deliver uh, on a mobile device, or uh, in, in the case where you're just not seeing that kind of traffic, uh, number one, uh, you know, it gives you a, a chance to kind of you know douse the flames a little bit and say, hey, look, you know, we're just not we're just not seeing this kind of traffic. But number two, I think the question is, you know, why aren't you seeing that kind of traffic? So you know, in light of all the statistics about mobile adoption and mobile usage, um, you know, what is it about your prospect base and your client base? Um, that that uh, that would lead them not to be um, accessing your site from a mobile uh, device, and and maybe and maybe there's some key learning there for your firm and your marketing strategy, as well. So Adrian, while, while we got you uh, on the hot seat, why don't we go to the the, the second um, the second thing uh, in the list, which is to really launch uh, you know, how to launch a simple mobile landing page. 
for your firm. And while Adrian sets up for this, what we thought we'd do is, uh, uh, is actually show you how easy it is to do this. And it's a little dangerous because, um, you know, anytime you do uh, a live, uh, live demo, uh, things tend to go wrong. I spent seven years at Adobe and learned that lesson uh, the hard way uh, about 20 times. But, uh, but what we wanted to show you was, uh, in essence, you know, if you take your mobile website, if you take your website and view it on a small screen, um, you know, most of our sites are not going to look that great. Um, but, but that doesn't mean that we, you know, we need to sit and stand by idly while we wait for that, that whole refresh to be done or the rebrand to be done before we can have that mobile website. Uh, or, or maybe, you know, maybe, you know, the estimate was nine months before we can have a mobile website. Um, there are tools today, and, and Adrian's going to show us one uh, that we actually use a visibility called Duda Mobile that can enable you to build a, a mobile uh, landing page that, that's beautiful and, 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 and functions and communicates that you're, you're a technically savvy firm very quickly and, and very easily and, and for a very low cost. Um, so, uh, so Adrian, why don't you just take us uh, real quickly through your, uh, through your example uh, just to hit the high points on how easy it is to do this. Yep, sure. Um, and you know, before I jump into that, you know, this isn't an, an ad for Duda Mobile. It's just the one we found that worked best for us. But you know, we provided a couple of other of, of com competing platforms that will, that may work as well. So do your research. Um, so into that, I'm going to put someone on the spot here, and she does not know it. Um, but on the call today, um, we have got um, Julie Yoder from Crown Dunleavy. And Julie, not picking on you in any way. Um, this was completely random. We just wanted to sort of make this a little bit more meaningful for everyone just to see that, you know, how simple this really is to do. So um, as James mentioned, um, we use a site called Duda Mobile. It's, it's an automated process that will build your site for you really quickly, but then gives you tools to go in and customize and edit and quickly publish and go live. So um, literally, we created the visibility account or visibility site in an afternoon and published it. Um, and it was that simple. Um, you can do this in a, under a couple of hours really easy. So to get started, I'm just going to enter you know, Crown Dunleavy's website. Um, and what Duda Mobile is doing now is just examining the site, sucking in the data, pulling in the graphics and the text and the links, sort of building a template that is similar to, in terms of the branding of, of the Crown Dunleavy website today. So now it's ready for me to start editing the site. The first decision I want to make, and this is again, you know, thinking back to some of the discussion Larry and James were talking about in terms of, of functionality on a mobile device, think about your navigation. That's key. Um, and so this Duda Mobile, while it doesn't give you every bit of functionality or flexibility that you do if you went to a big experience as a designer, um, they give you plenty of choices and variation. So if you have very, you know, here's an example of a navigation where you know, it gives you a little menu option in the upper right. Um, so you may want to choose this type of navigation if you have a lot of links, right? It, where you couldn't necessarily display um, a navigation like this with buttons, right? If you have more than two or three items, this is not practical. Similar to, they give you a navigation where you can put your navigation elements across the bottom. Again, that's practical for a few items, but maybe not a lot. Um, so based on the Dunleavy scrape that Duda Mobile did, there's a lot of interior pages. So we'll start with this one, which we can change later. Um, now that we've got our site in and we've chosen our layout, um, you can choose color options, which I'll skip for now. We'll click next, and this is where we can start customizing the pages of the site. Um, we have basic options and some full options. Um, the basic just lets us edit the header and the logo, the menu, we can remove content. So this is where you know, we can go in and decide we don't need some of these paragraphs. You know, we can just take stuff out that we don't want. You know? um, all these images that... How do you decide on the visibility page when, when you built our mobile site? Right. What content to keep? You, you didn't keep everything. What was your thought process? It, exactly. Yeah, so really in terms of you know, visibility, we thought about what were the objectives we wanted from someone visiting us on a smartphone. And it was really, from our objective, it was more lead generation. It was communicating the value proposition of the product quickly. And then being a B2B business that we are, it was to entice you know, the people that we are targeting to get in contact with us to, to, re to register for a sales demonstration of our service. And so we really hit the key points, you know, the, key, the key two or three points um, around why visibility, you should be interested in, in what we have to offer and what our value proposition is. And then being a mobile device, we made it all about engagement. It's easy to, in one touch, call us, email us, or schedule a demo. You can see our client testimonials. So it's all the things that would support you in that buy process. To support our customers, we happen to have a mobile-friendly platform that we use for client support. 
So from our mobile website, if you're a customer, you can log into our support platform and achieve the same level of service that you would expect um, from us, whether you're on a computer or a smartphone, it's all the same. Um, so the that's just, really the gist, where we, yeah. So, so the, the gist really is that you're not going to keep all the content that's on your on your PC site, even though it gets ingested in a tool like this. You will go in and and streamline it and, and make it and, and make it a little more concise and uh, and um, uh, faster faster to get through. So why don't you uh, continue just uh, taking us through uh, what your what your last step here is. Adrian, have we lost you, or are you still there? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Yep. Okay. So, uh, sorry we, about that. We, yeah, we couldn't hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. So to wrap up, you, you publish your site. Um, you, you, they give two options. There's a free service where they throw an ad on the bottom of your site, or for nine dollars a month, and literally it's nine dollars a month, you can have a fully hosted, fully functional mobile website. When I click pub publish here, it's going to publish it to their hosted area. I will then be provided a snippet of code that I give to my IT or my web guy. He puts that up on the top of my home page, and that's all there is to it. Um, and the next time someone visits my home page, that due to mobile script detects a mobile device and then serves up the mobile-friendly version of my site. I can go change my due to mobile site anytime I want to. You know, we have a news page out there that, that we just changed recently on our own because we ran a press release last week. Um, so we're constantly updating it, and, and I can do it myself without having to go through our regular IT process to get our, our website updated. So, um, so, so just want to make sure that everyone understands on the phone that, that um, uh, we, we literally just went live through a process. We, we, didn't, we didn't modify or touch or have to have access to the, um, uh, the, the Crow and, and, and uh, Dunleavy site at all. Uh, it just The system pulls it in and scrapes it off the site and then presents this mobile view that you can easily edit. Um, Adrian, we didn't talk about this, but what would you do if you're trying to do this but you also need a mobile directory? Um, is, there, is there a solution there if you don't have the ability to you know, maybe go and, and have all your bios mobile optimized? There absolutely is a solution for, for the mobile directory. Um, as you well know, James, one of the features of the visibility mobile business card is the ability to put a, a mobile directory. If you happen to have a website that is already mobile optimized, you can certainly integrate yours into this. Um, but if you don't, um, those are hard to build. And so if you, you know, choose visibility as a platform, one of the features is a, um, a fully functional directory that, that lists you know, a searchable directory of all your professionals on the, on the system with links right to their own individual mobile business cards. If you just go to uh, viz.me slash um, yes, James. I will bring one up right here. Yeah, we just showed them. We'll move on to, uh, to our, fourth, our fourth tip. Okay. So this is basically just an iPhone emulator that I have on the screen. Um, and there I have pulled up James's real mobile business card. This is important to know, again, one of the things that Larry hinted on, one of the features of mobile is um, geo-tracking and location aware. And so, you know, one of the features of the mobile business card is the ability to determine that location. So that I was just giving permission for the location. So here is James's mobile business card, and you can see he's got the directory. So when I load that, here is the visibility team um, in just a searchable directory of our small team. Um, so there I can go look at my mobile business card uh, right from James's. So I can go hey, get information about me. Yep. So I can go get information about me. Um, and then I just thought I'm done with mine. I can go meet the rest of the team and get back to the directory where I can go to James or as many of you clients, um, if we have any current clients on the phone, you will be familiar with this person. Um, this is Rocky. Um, who current clients are speaking with quite often. So I think the point here is that, um, and we provide a direct URL to this directory as well. So you know, using a service like Duda, and, and as Adrian said, there are lots of services out there. Duda just worked well for us. Um, but uh, using a service like uh, like Duda in combination with a, uh, a mobile business card vendor like Visibility could actually give you an entire mobile experience out of out of a box. For a, a very reasonable, uh, for a very reasonable amount of time and, and, and cost, um, and, and get you set up with a, a full mobile experience while um, you know while you may make deeper plans for uh, you know for uh, uh, you know for your mobile your overall mobile strategy. 
So let's uh, just watch the clock here and want to make sure we have time for questions and things. Um, can we get um, uh, over to uh, the next slide and, um, and talk about, oh, there we are, to make sure that uh, V cards work everywhere. And um, uh, I, will, uh, I will take this one and then Larry, you'll bring up the rear with, uh, with our fifth one. So um, basically, what we just want to make sure that um, we, we surface this. We talked about this a little bit earlier on, but just want to show a, a real live example um, in that you, know, you may think that you're delivering a mobile experience uh, or may not even be thinking about mobile, uh, which is probably more the case uh, when you put together things like email signatures. Uh, but then, but then you know, obviously, we're reading mail and things like that on, on, on mobile devices. And when someone goes to, let's say, click to download a V-card, if, if, if that's an option you have in your email signature, and, and we're seeing more and more that people have this option in their email signature, um, you, know, you run into a device issue. Uh, because uh, for whatever reason, Apple has decided that uh, they're not going to support uh, the V-card uh, file format in Safari, or they just don't support it yet. And so uh, the experience over on the left is what you get when you try to download a V card in Safari. It's basically a, a broken image and a very confusing um, experience, and you don't understand why you can't download it. Uh, versus the experience on the right, where if you link to a, a mobile business card uh, or to a, a, a site that can uh, be smart enough to detect the operating system, then you can put a safety net around the experience you're providing for your clients and prospects and ensure that they can engage, that they can download that V card. And, uh, and get what they want. So this is something, again, in the spirit of being able to very quickly, uh, you know, just after this webinar or sometime in the next couple of days, just go and look at how you're handling uh, vCards and, and where you're promoting their download, uh, downloadability, and, uh, and just make sure that you're delivering uh, an experience that can be followed through all the way on all devices the same way. The, um, uh, the, the fourth, moving on to the fourth, I was, uh, I was off my count here. Um, the uh, the fourth is uh, uh, is is to really think about digital bridges and uh, and other ways to share uh, in a mobile environment. And we talked a little bit about QR codes and the data um, they're being used, but there are other kind there are all kinds of ways to uh, that the mobile I enables sharing. Um, it, it, there's a, a new capability in Android devices called Android Beam, where you can literally you know put two Androids together. You may have seen this commercial; it's a great commercial. Uh, where um, a couple of people are standing outside a, um, uh, an Apple store and they, and they, and they beam uh, a song tracks to each other uh, instantaneously. I don't know how fast that would be, but it, the idea is you, you bring the phones together and you transmit information. Um, and you can do the same thing with a, a mobile business card or a website uh, and, uh, and, and transmit uh, these things together. You can have an NFC card. Um, we make a physical card, like a credit card with a chip in it. And uh, our clients keep it in their wallet, and if they, you know, if they meet somebody who has an Android device or an NFC-enabled phone, like the new RIM is going to be, or a Windows phone, all you have to do is literally touch the phone to the wallet, and the mobile business card for that person comes up. Um, so that's kind of like a wireless QR code. Um, you know, the ability to text message a mobile business card is 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 phenomenally valuable as well. Um, that's uh, something else that we support. Uh, Apple Passbook, um, having your mobile business card available so someone can scan the screen of your phone. Um, a QR code, an Apple Passbook, is another digital bridge. And of course, there's the old tried and, and, and true QR code, which is gaining in adoption uh, in the consumer products, goods categories, and starting to gain traction uh, in the professional services category. Uh, again, uh, you know, the example here is uh, you know QR codes and ketchup bottles and movie posters and uh, you know and uh, bus shelter signs. You've got you've got the consumer packaged goods industry spending literally billions of dollars indirectly promoting QR code technology, and so it's not a surprise to see that that usage is up, and uh, on almost all platforms, uh, QR code readers come native uh, as well. So, um, so just think about you know, where you can you know, make it very easy in print to get to the online um, identity or, or you know, the engagement capability. And, and QR codes um, are sort of interesting, and my last point is, is um, you know, because it works so well in print, we, we see clients putting them not only in business cards, but in pitch books, uh, where you've got the photo and the bio, um, uh, but also put the QR code, because in many cases, that pitch book's going to be printed when your firm is being considered for a project or a job. Um, even putting them on the, on the, on the downloadable bios. Um, Carter and English is a client of ours. You see the example over on the right. They dynamically add that QR code to the, to the bio, uh, the PDF of the bio, which is going to be printed. And so 
someone can just scan that and uh, and get to the online identity for that person, get them a mobile business card, and engage with them uh, without having to rekey all their contact information in. Uh, even people doing speak uh, on, on a speaking circuit, you know, if you have people on the speaking circuit, you know, make sure you send uh, you know the headshot and the bio for the speaker's book, but also send a QR code and speak to the um, you know, the people organizing the event and say, look, I really like that QR code to be in the speaker's book. And uh, you know, and, and that mobile business card could have a link for a while to the presentation. So whoever's on stage, you know, they can say, "Look, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, just scan my QR code and request it off of my mobile business card." It's like putting a couple hundred business cards in the audience, uh, which is uh, which is tremendously powerful. So lots of ways to think about how to leverage, um, you know, traditional print tools with mobile by using these these digital bridge technologies in co in combination with. Uh, mobile optimized experiences like a mobile business card. And I think that brings us to uh, to our last tip of the day. And what I wanted to uh, demonstrate here for you was uh, how you, uh, kind of a, an example that will illustrate how you want to design for your for the mobile web. And Put yourself in uh, the position of a person who's been driving down the road, the lights come, up, come out, and you've been pulled over for uh, a drunk driving charge. And uh, whether or not you're guilty, you're right away going to want to know what your options are. So what you're seeing here are sort of three screenshots of how we've uh, dealt with that on Lawyers.com. So you can go right into uh, a section where we have uh, information about uh, a DUI. Uh, so if you're sitting in the car there trying to figure out what to do and you need a quick answer and you don't quite know where to go, you can go to lawyers.com and find that. And then it will uh, immediately take you into uh, the uh, uh, article on uh, DUI arrests and what you need to do. And then you could you scroll down to the text if you're you're wondering whether or not to take that breathalyzer. Here it is. You've got uh, some uh, objective advice that says, well, you know, if you have been drinking a lot, you probably should not take the breathalyzer test. And what what I've illustrated here is sort of, um, you know, a very anxious person at their cell phone needing an answer right away, not interested in plowing through a, a lot of navigation or having a lot of choices. They just want to find a way to get to the answer quickly and they want to present it to them uh, in a really concise format. So when you're thinking about putting up something on your law firm website, see if you can put your mindset in, in, into that of somebody who's been pulled over for a DUI and you could just sort of feel the urgency and, and the immediacy of the need. and that's what you should put up on your law firm website. What are the issues that you that your clients and potential clients are going to need an answer to right away? If, if they have some sort of an exigency that they need addressed, that's how you should present it on your uh, mobile website. You know, on, the, on the next slide, um, you know, if you sort of think, you know, this through even one step further, Larry, you know, if I'm sitting in that car and, and you're right, I, I don't want to go through 18 paragraphs of bio copy. You know, on, on on someone's you know on someone's background, I have a very immediate need, and that 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 I have one question, which is, do I take the test or not? And and then and then you know, it's exciting to think about the power of these tools as lead generation and driving your business. Because the next question is, okay, well, where am I? You know, if if, if you're in a suburb of Minneapolis, you know, and, you know, you may you may now need to know at two o'clock in the morning, you know, who who's open. What what attorney is on is on duty right now who can help me? So, you know the next the next thing you want to show is you know who are the attorneys? Help help that person make uh, you know purchase decision uh, or or at least a, a, a decision to get some help. Um, but don't give them everybody who you know who's in the listing. You know who's open right now and and, and how are they rated? Right. You know and and to put it in sort of a business context equivalent, imagine yourself if you're the owner of a factory. And uh, a bunch of uh, government agents have just shown up with some sort of an enforcement off, uh, you know, order, or uh, you know, maybe it's ICE coming to in in inspect your plant uh, for people who are, you know, illegal aliens. You need to talk to somebody right away, or or maybe you've been served with uh, some sort of papers and you need to get an injunction. You know, these are the kinds of things that uh, clients are just gonna. Uh, 
they're, they're just going to be freaking out and they're going to want an answer right away and they're going to turn to their cell phone first. Now, going back to our earlier point, which is, you know, when you're designing for a smartphone, the key thing, of course, to bear in mind is that the primary thing people use smartphones for is engagement. So here are just three examples of how we've achieved this on the lawyers.com site. Uh, we uh, have a library of at least 100 videos that focus on news events. And video is a terrific way to engage an audience. People, one, one of the primary uses for smartphones is to look at videos online. So we've created, um, uh, we, we, we've made it so that uh, a, a person can find our videos in the news section and they're, they're not dependent on flash. So that if you've got a, an Apple phone, uh, you can watch the video. And similarly, when you look up an attorney, uh, in this example, we've, uh, uh, we're displaying uh, the web version of a profile for the law firm Cooper and Smith. Now, if you uh, if you need to talk to a lawyer, you know, or you've you've uh, got some sort of situation, perhaps you've been arrested, and this is your one call. Um, the, what, what, what we've set forth here is you don't even need to know what the email address is or the phone number. You just push a button and uh, it, it, it completes the work for you. Or you can click on it, a map, and it'll show you where they're located. And if you wanted to feel extra assured, as uh, a lot of people do, you know, we've got a rating here about what clients think about the firm as well as other lawyers. This is more important than you think when you realize how much people rely on rating services on like uh, book reviews on Amazon.com, restaurant reviews on Yelp, and uh, hotels on TripAdvisor. So these are all things that you can uh, build into uh, your mobile site. And then the, uh, the third screen on the right shows our Ask a Lawyer feature. And what, could, what better way to engage people than with a Q&A? So in this situation, you know, we've uh, gone to the effort, as I mentioned before, that uh, We've got 500 lawyers who are ready to ask questions. Um, if you allow the uh, system to, uh, if you click the button that allows the cell phone to give your location, you know, all of those blanks will be filled in for you. And, you know, it's just a great way to engage people. And, uh, James, the reason we've taken this approach is we found that a quarter, 25% of our traffic to our site comes through the mobile site. So that's how important it is. Let's see, um, James. I, I can't hear you. I don't. I don't know if I dropped out or you dropped out. I'm, no, I'm just. I'm. I'm so stunned by that number. I. I don't know what to. I don't know how to respond to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, well, you know, yeah, that's when, when you think about it. That's that. You know, when you start to see that, you know, one out of four people are accessing your site on a smartphone, you realize just how important it is to design for them. It is. So, um, so we're watching the clock here. We, we've we've gone through the material uh, that we that we wanted to uh, to share with you, and uh, we, we really hope that it was a, a good use of your time to see the stats and kind of have a walkthrough of why we chose those stats and what they mean. Um, a couple of examples of, of of what is mobile friendly and or you know and and what is not, or at least you know maybe mobile mobile mobile, mobile friendly. Uh, and then and then five tips that you can do uh, immediately. Uh, you know, getting off the call today or uh, sometime uh, this week. So, um, uh, so I'm just watching the clock here, and, uh, and I'm mindful of the fact that uh, we're we're about five minutes uh, over. Um, maybe uh, if we can keep you on the line for a couple minutes, Larry, we can just do uh, maybe one or two questions, and then um, and then uh, I just would encourage everyone to uh, who have questions that maybe didn't get answered or or prefer to talk offline, just to reach out to uh, one of us, and uh, we will get uh, we will get those questions answered in FAQ. And then uh, depending on how many questions we get, uh, maybe we'll just pull together an FAQ and uh, circulate that to all the attendees as well. So, um, so if, we, uh, if we do that, if there are questions, um, you can, uh, you can uh, go ahead and, and ask your questions uh, or raise your hand. And, um, uh, but you can type in your question, which may be the most efficient way to do it here in, in the shortest amount of time. We do have one question that came in. Uh, and Larry, I think this is probably more for you. And this is uh, and maybe a little less uh, focused on mobile, but uh, what about disclaimers when emailing a business? You mean what, what sort of disclaimers uh, should the business make? 
I, I think it's hard to know specifically, but but uh, this may be if a law firm is emailing a business, uh, are there uh, marketing disclaimers and things like that that they need to be mindful of? I mean, yeah, it's a simple thing to um, uh, put it either in your terms or conditions or to have an autoresponder. Um, you know, the chief concern is that you want to make clear that uh, if, if someone has uh, disclose information to you that this does not form an attorney-client relationship. Um, in fact, uh, you, you should probably have some information on the site basically saying, asking people not to disclose the details of their case and just simply to request a call because, uh, of course, if you, gain, if you gain a lot of information, you can be um, conflicted out of a case. So it's just a simple matter of uh, anticipating the situations that you want to avoid and, and addressing that with uh, an autoresponder or uh, some text right on your mobile site or your website and you know you can eliminate any problems in advance. Um, we had a we had a second question here which is um, uh, maybe Adrian I'm going to throw to you which is uh, by creating a mobile site through due to mobile uh, how will it affect the Google Analytics? Yeah, sure. Um, and I saw that question come through as well. So the good news is that, in fact, it actually improves your analytics. You know, when you set up your Doodle Mobile account, one of the options it gives you is inserting your Google Analytics site ID right into Doodle Mobile. That's all you have to do to, con to connect your Doodle Mobile site into your existing Google Analytics account, and the data just instantly starts pulling in and gives you, you know, all more advanced reporting. Um, Doodle Mobile and, and Google have actually worked very closely together to make that really easy to do. That's great. You know, one of the one of the great key successes. We're all marketing people here, so um, you know, one of the great successes we watch for when we're doing uh, webinars with uh, with ourselves or our professionals is uh, how many people did we keep throughout the hour. And uh, I would say that this was a uh, massively successful time uh, we just spent together the last 60 minutes. Uh, uh, virtually no one has dropped off, um, and so I just want to uh, extend uh, thanks to. Uh, Larry and to Adrian uh, and to everyone who took the time to attend today's session. We hope that it was uh, useful and valuable. Uh, wasn't too much of a commercial, but really try to use uh, some uh, some some leading examples uh, in, uh, in 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 making the point about the importance of not just being mobile friendly, but what it really means to be mobile friendly and really thinking about not just content but the functionality as well. Uh, the deck will be available um, and uh, and a recording will be available as well and we'll be proactively sending it out to all of the attendees, and uh, you can feel free to pass that on. And uh, like I said, if you have any other additional questions that uh, didn't, didn't get through or strike you after, I uh, want you to just uh, reach out to, uh, to us, and uh, we will compile those and get answers uh, either individually or as, a, um, as an FAQ if it's more efficient to do that. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for attending, and I uh, wish everyone a great rest of your week. Thank you.